Peter, and today is International Mock Day. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. It's basically a big event where everybody is getting together and collaborating on May 1st and making a Lego mock. Now, this entire thing was organized by the Jackhammer, so make sure to check his channel out in the description, or maybe even in the iCard, I'm not sure. For International Mock Day, there were two rules. One, you had to upload a post or a video to whatever social media site you choose on May 1st. Two, the maximum size of your mock could be 16 by 16 studs. Now, I don't know if you have eyes, but my mock is slightly larger than that. In fact, it's 32 by 32 studs when you lay it out flat. But I have a plan for how to get around that rule. But before we get to that, let's talk about these cottages themselves. So the thing that inspired me to build this mock was the LEGO Creator Cottages set. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like, if you look up a LEGO Creator Cottage, you'll probably find it. But I saw that because we had two of those sitting in our city, and I really liked the way it looked. And that gave me the idea to just say, hey, why don't we just put these all in one build? And so that's what I've done here. I wanted it to have some terrain features and not just be three houses sitting on a base plate because one, that's boring, and two, base plates don't come apart, and therefore I would be breaking the rules. So what I did, and I'll probably show a couple of progress pictures here, is I put some supports with different heights underneath each of these 16 by 16 plates, and then I put them next to each other, and then I put some different parts in between to make it look like a natural landscape. And I think it actually did pretty well. The only unfortunate thing is that I am completely out of green plates and slopes. On the upside though, I think that this terrain actually looks pretty good. I would have done some more around the sides to make it look like it was more natural, but the thing is I wanted to put this in my city when I was done, and when the shape is completely freeform, it's really difficult to do that. I really wanted to be able to just put it up against something. So the fact that I'm putting this in my city, along with the lack of green parts I have left, means that the sides are just going to be flat for now. But let's move into the actual meat of the mop instead of just looking at the bones. That sounded so weird. First up, we have this nice little pond here. I actually tried to put some detail in it, like the lily pad and the, the shark fin. The shark fin's just for humor. I know there's not gonna actually be a shark in a pond like that. I also used up like all of our transparent blue stud things. What do you call these? I don't know. But around the pond, I just tried to make it look like it was naturally flowing into it. So the pond is at the lowest elevation in this mop. Most of the terraining was just stacking green plates on top of each other and seeing what looked right. There's not really any complicated technique to it. It's just trial and error. Moving on to the first cottage on the left, that one is pretty much just taken from the set itself. I made some small modifications. I also changed the interior so that it actually had a proper interior, and I added it a little patio. And on the interior, you just have a couch with a little, I don't know, in table sort of thing. Moving on to the second house though, things get a little bit more interesting because it's on a diagonal. And the way I attached it on the diagonal was I took a little turning base. I don't really know what to call it, but you can probably see it here. I just turned the house and then put it on that turning plate. And then in the back, I have some little corner panel pieces to make sure it doesn't rotate. On the interior of this house, I just made a living room with a couch, and here's what the couch looks like on its own. It's not really that complicated. One thing to note about this house is that there is an attic with a skylight, so a person can actually sleep in this house. Obviously, it's not a full-size house. It doesn't have all the rooms that a normal one would, but I tried to make some representation of a living space. The third house, however, is where I really started to run out of parts, because this is the one I built last. You can see that the window and the roof is not as nice looking. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not as good as the others. And there's also no chimney on this house, but there is another bedroom with a little bit of a dresser thing. And I think that looks nice. The most interesting part of this house though is the interior. The kitchen is just something I decided to add in because no other, none of the other houses had one yet. So I added a little bit of a refrigerator with some bread on top and then a stove with a vent hood and also just some cabinets. The rug is just made of some rounded tiles that I found at the pick-a-brick wall. You can see the back of the mock is pretty plain, although I tried my best to make it look a little interesting. I didn't want it to look good from just one angle. I think it looks okay from the back. It's just obviously it looks better from the front. And as for the trees, I really would have loved to do some custom trees, but that really just wasn't an option with the parts I had, so I, I didn't do that. The figures were another part of this that I really liked because I think they bring it to life a little bit. You can see the person who lives here is waving to the person sitting on the dock and has a dog out on the patio. All right, so now that I've shown you the mock, let me show you how it fits with the rules. Alright, so I've come down to the basement to show you all my epic plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these sections apart and I'm going to stack them. So the way I'm going to stack them is I've got some green bricks and some blue plates. Uh, the colors don't really matter, I just need supports. And then I'm going to put supports in between these and hopefully it doesn't fall over. So let's take the sections apart. Alright, so I've taken the sections apart and 
Now it's going to be a bit more of a challenge. I'm probably going to use mostly just these 1x2s, and if it falls over, I still have to restack it and rebuild it, because otherwise it's not going to qualify with the rules. So, let's hope these are enough. I think I'll start with the pond on bottom. Uh, I guess I'll put this section on top of that. No, I feel like this section should go on top because it's the tallest. The second smallest one, I guess, is this one. I have no clue how to tell if this is in the right spot. Alright, now just the final section. I've done it! <laughs> They're stacked. Hey, I guess this fits in a 16 by 16 area now, and there was no height limit. So this follows the rules. You can't disqualify me now. I was kind of expecting it for it to fall over, but this works too. <laughs> that was very close. So with that, I should probably put my hands down. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I did build another mock for International Mock Day, so you can check that out. It's actually a model of my studio setup, so if you want to check that out, feel free. And I think that's it, so thank you for watching, and see ya.